All right, YouTube, there's word coming now that Charles Manson may be getting married uh, to the, the girl named Star, who he's been seeing for quite a while. She spent years, uh, she actually lives in, she moved to the vicinity to spend more time with Manson after uh, corresponding with him by mail for some time. Uh, and, of course, the media, eager to eat up any form of sensationalism regarding Manson, decided to, you know, report the story. Because Manson, despite being very old and feeble, uh, and despite the case being many, many decades old, uh, still generates that same media buzz that he did uh, way back in 1969. I mean, you can't really get much better than Manson for generating a media buzz. Anything he does, practically, uh, it goes right into the media. So here are my thoughts. Uh, first, on the media, I would say that they're, they're largely getting it wrong. Uh, that they are assuming that Star is a member of some cultish activity as the result of wanting to marry Manson, uh, that she's been brainwashed, manipulated in some way. Um, I've never spoken with Manson, myself, personally. I have, however, spoken with a large number of people who are familiar with Manson, uh, people who have either corresponded with him a great deal uh, by phone, by, the, by mail, in person, all of the above in many cases. Uh, I've spoken with people who are quite familiar with Manson. The idea, and you can watch or listen to any of the, the recent, like last decade things that have uh, been produced about Manson, any of the voice clips or interviews, or not interviews, but any video footage of him, you can tell that he's not manipulating anybody uh, at this point. He's, he's old, he has his own problems, he had uh, problems breathing not that long ago. Actually, they, they got to the point where he had been asking for stationery to be sent to him so that he could, you know, write people letters. Uh, they said to stop doing that because it was building up dust in his cell and it was actually aggravating his lung problems. So he's he's an old man. He's in his 70s. Um, he's you know he's not doing anything of mention as far as you know killing and brainwashing and leading hippie cult revolutions anymore. Uh, my thought being he never did to begin with. That was all sensationalism, but that's the way it goes. On the topic of Manson himself as a person, what I'm seeing is the, the normal, stereotypical people who don't really know anything about Manson at all. Uh, they've heard of him, maybe from one or two sources. They saw a story on him. Uh, they maybe read Helter Skelter. They saw a part of an interview, and they think that they're experts on Charles Manson. And they largely think, of course, that he's an acid, brainwashing, hippie cult mastermind. And then there are a few people who see Manson and they say, well, he's, he's got it going on. He's the smartest dude on earth. He's a revolutionary. Wow, this dude's awesome. And they run the gamut from people who are into anarcho-primitivism, uh, people who detest technology and are, are environmentalist, uh, out on generally the far end of the environmentalist spectrum, but they're there. Uh, people who are extremely left-wing might be attracted to what they perceive as his socialism or his communist ideologies. People who are on the right wing, specifically people who are into neo-Nazism, uh, the Klan, groups like that, they sometimes appreciate Manson and believe he's, you know, a racial heretic. Uh, people who are into, into conspiracies love Manson, of course. So you've got all of these people, they all formulate their own opinions about Manson, and you can tell. If you have the ability to read people, and you have the ability to dig deeper into their psyche, you can tell that most of the people that proclaim anything about Manson don't know what they're talking about. Uh, whether they're for him or against him, they've created this dichotomous character. This sort of, he's got to be either complete good, and he's, ra he's actually sane, and everyone else in society is insane, or they, they denigrate him and they say, well, he was the worst murderer ever. He was brainwashing hippie cult leader, terrible person, killed that poor Sharon Tate and, and six other people that we don't know the names of. And most people can't name other than Sharon Tate. They know the Tate LaBianca murders. They can't name, they don't know who Steve Perrin is. They don't know who Frakowski is. They don't know any of these things. Uh, 
they they honestly have no clue, and yet they proclaim themselves experts on the case. My own thoughts about Manson is that he's neither inherently good nor evil. He's a human being like anybody else, a, a human being who is now reaching the end of his lifespan and isn't doing as much anymore. Uh, he's been locked up most of his life. He's spent most of his time, uh, a great deal of his time, in solitary confinement. He, his mind is a little bit scrambled. Uh, when you see interviews of him acting crazy, you've got to understand, in the early interviews of Manson, and in periods where he's been more lucid, and in writings and scribblings people have, have said about him before the trial, and before his... his most recent incarceration, uh, circa 1970, you get the feeling that he was mostly a normal dude. That this psychosis that people see him as having is largely the result of, is a self-fulfilling prophecy of being locked up for a crime that, let's face it, there's no real solid evidence that he was truly involved in, other than as a, not certainly not an accomplice, but an accessory. Um, my own thought is that he should have been released a long time ago, that it was Tex Watson who killed all seven people at both murder scenes. Uh, it was Tex Watson's doing. He shot and, and killed all of them. Nobody else had killed anybody. You can uh, indict the other people that were present at the Tate scene, certainly above what you would indict Manson for, because he was simply at the La Bianca scene, left long before the La Biancas were killed, and there's evidence that he th that his intent was simply to rob them. You tell that to the average person, and they say that you must be brainwashed by Manson. Uh, that somehow, e even if you've never spoken with him personally, as I haven't, uh, that you've been brainwashed somehow by Charles Manson, which, which would be an exceptional level of brainwashing. The idea that somebody can actually do that and hold people in thrall without ever even interacting with them. Uh, it's pure mythology in the highest order. But, here's the other thing. I do not, I've basically given up associating with people who see Manson as some sort of special snowflake messiah. Uh, whether it be for his environmental views, for his racial views, for his social views, any of this for his spiritual views, certainly. I've given up doing that because I've realized that there is a subset of the population that believes he is a messianic figure. Which is clearly wrong. He's a nickel and dime car thief who got indicted uh, as part of a larger scheme for crimes that he probably was very limited, uh, to a very limited extent involved in. Uh, at the Tate scene, it's, it's possible to think he wasn't involved at all and didn't even know what was going on. <clears throat> given his reaction to Susan Atkins returning with bloody hands and knife, if that's true at all, then he had no idea that the Tate scene had even happened. Uh, of course, Nicholas Schreck's book on the topic goes on to state that he may have gone back to the murder scene to help them clean up. That's not set in stone, but that's one theory. I don't think Manson is special. There was a time when I first familiarized myself with Manson's music, interviews of him. Uh, so I watched Charles Manson Superstar, also by Nicholas Schreck, very good documentary, uh, the only one that I could find that was halfway fair. I was enthralled by Manson, uh, because I felt that there was something there that people weren't getting, that there was something beyond the actual official story. I couldn't quite put my finger on it. And so, I, and at first, because I was young and inexperienced with such matters, uh, I, I assumed that what was hidden was some sort of divine truth, or, or he knew something that he shouldn't. Turns out that's partially right. Uh, of course, if Nicholas is right, uh, it had to do with the Mafia, but uh, where I personally can't say I'm sure. Uh, I think that's probably the closest to the truth that anyone's going to get on the Manson case, uh, at least at this current juncture. But the idea that the media has some uh, lame circus because he gets married, uh, whatever you think about Manson personally, whether you think he's some sort of uh, psychotic hippie or a messiah or, or anything in between, a con, you know, is, whether he's special or not, uh, it does make very little sense that the media would take a story this innocuous and build upon it and make up literally new legends. It's almost like you're watching a legend unfold when you keep up with any news about Charles Manson. Because literally, oh, his guitar is taken away, front page news. 
uh, his guitar gets stolen by a guard and fenced on eBay in the news. Uh, Manson in solitary. It may not be front page news because it happens so often, but all these other sources cover it. Uh, and they keep talking about Manson over and over and over. I think it's fitting. Here's something very strange. And I'm sure that if I talked to Nicholas about it, he'd have something witty to say. Uh, it's very strange that we're moving towards the 50th anniversary of the JFK murders. And this happens. Because Nicholas Schreck uh, wrote the new Manson file, and all of a sudden all this new Manson stuff appears all over the web. And now we're moving towards the anniversary of JFK's killing, and Nicholas Schreck is, is finishing up a book about the JFK murders. I do find that a little bit odd, and I'm sure I'm sure that there must be some divine you get connection to this, uh, and and that it's that it's all there spiritually. But literally, the whole Manson topic. Once you've exhausted the interviews, which range from slightly startling to downright amusing, the Charlie Rose interview was funny. Uh, Manson is an amusing person; his actions can be seen as as amusing by most people. Uh, the documentaries, there I think there have been a total of like six documentaries made, including the mockumentary, the Helter Skelter one, which, uh, total trash. Uh, I couldn't even watch it all. I was, I was laughing too hard because it was so, such bad acting. Uh, all the books, literally, uh, probably over a hundred books have been written about the Manson case. Um, once you've exhausted all of this material, and you've read all the conspiracy theories about his alien connections, his satanic connections, his pagan connections, his Scientology connections, uh, the Mafia, Jews, uh, all of these different theories. Once you've exhausted all of that, and you've sort of made up your mind what you think about Manson, the topic does get old. The problem being, I was, I was quite active in the pro-Manson community until about last year uh, when I finally said fuck it I realized nothing was being solved and I made a video on the topic I said people are are splintering off into their own little cliques uh, they're not going to get right with themselves they have no clue what's going on they all have different opinions on what Manson represents to them and they fight all the time so what's the point of having any sort of free Manson group or anything like that when people can't even agree you'd have you know rally of 10 people and then you'd have a counter rally of 10 other people who completely disagree with them. 10 people say, well, Manson's the white messiah, we've got to free him. And these other 10 people would say, no, Manson's the, the Native American messiah or something. Um, it does get old after a while, uh, to the point where once you've made up your mind, it's really not worth looking into anymore. It gets old, it gets boring. Uh, people have other things that they've got to do. But anyway, I mean, if he does get married to Star, all the best to them. I will keep my own personal thoughts about this private, uh, because I do have my own fairly well-informed personal thoughts about it that I'd rather not share publicly. Um, but all the best, I guess, if they can make it work. I don't know if they give conjugal visits to people that are, you know, in for life. Uh, I'm sure that would be thrilling, considering Manson's age and physical and mental condition. Uh, I guess whatever works for them, you know, if they're happy, go right for it. Uh, but, it, I mean, the media is completely sensationalizing it. And you can probably bet that somebody fed this information to the media, and it would have been kept private if they hadn't. Uh, I can't imagine Manson really, at this point, enjoys being in the news cycle. Uh, for any reason other than to shock people. Maybe it was Manson's idea of a joke, maybe it's true, we'll see. Uh, that's about all. Peace out.